to Tune of the Month and happy December! I'm Mari Black and I thought that this month we would close out the Tune Year 2023 with a beautiful celebratory waltz. I had a couple of requests from you folks to teach this one. Uh, this is an original of mine and it's called Lena's Waltz. Dance along. And that's the tune. If you're just listening, thanks for stopping by. I'll see you next month. And if you're ready to learn it, you know how this works. Grab your instrument. Let's go. Okay, so maybe you've already figured out just by listening and kind of sounding it out along with me. This is in F major, one flat, a beautiful, stately, uh, elegant waltz key, I think. Um, actually, anything key, but especially waltzes. Okay. So this is a tune that's got a very simple form. It follows that very standard uh, A section, B section, and within each section, part one, part two, part one comes back, and there's an ending. We've seen this on how many tunes of the month at this point, let alone all the ones you've done in the rest of your life. So I'm gonna play the A section, not too far under tempo, because you know these slow, slower tempo tunes, if you slow them down too far, they don't make any sense but a little bit so you can kind of follow along. Start sounding it out. Find your F major chord. Because a lot of things are based on this arpeggio. This is kind of a Canadian, old time, Canadian style waltz. So lots of arpeggiation. See how much you can figure out right with me. One, two, three, one, two. So you could just rewind the video, play that with me a bunch of times, sound it out, figure it out. That's what these tune videos are all about. Can you just get it by ear? Um, so give it a try. And if it helps you to break it down a little further, that's also what I'm here for. So let's do it. Okay, so you can hear there are lots of triplets in this, right? Triplet one, and triplet one, and triplet That's the first phrase, we call it part one. So all those triplets always are gonna get slurred, 
And often they'll get slurred with a pickup into it. And triple lit one. And triple lit one. Right? So it's a very nice waltz bowing, works for lots of tunes. Um, the first pickup is a triplet. It's basically outlining the F major arpeggio that we mentioned. So let's try it. One, two, three, one, two, triplet pickup. F major. And triplet B flat. Did you follow those chords? There's F major and then a B flat chord. F major. B flat. Up the scale, F major. Yeah, and if you caught my bowing, this way, if I slur the triplets up bow, they are the pickups, the down bow ends up downbeat, which is what we're always looking for, right? So check it out. Triplet down, two, and triple it down. Two and triple it. Now check this out. Down. Slur it down. Right? See how I slurred the second? One, two, three, one. So that all downbeats land down, but it's a very nice feel. Let's try one more time. Part one. Catch these bowing patterns there through the entire tune. One, two, three, one. Two up major, triple it down. Two and triple it one. Two and triple it one. Two, three, one, two, three. Good. I'm gonna do it again, and this time I'm gonna start to put in some ornaments. Usually we wait till later. Let's do it now. So what you're gonna hear in this tune is that I'm using a lot of hammer-ons, which we've discussed in many past tune of the month videos. That's a single grace note from below. So right here. Right, so I'm trying to grace that B flat, so the grace note is the A below. And it kind of leans in, right? A single grace note coming from below the melody. Uh, so that's a good place to do it, actually. One, two. One, two. How about there? Now I could do it here, too. But actually, because that's the high point of the phrase, I'm going to do an even cooler grace note, which we've also discussed on past tunes of the month, the scoop. Rather than just approaching from below by one note, I'm going to approach by two. And do you feel how that gives it more momentum up to the top of the phrase? You won't always have time to fit a full scoop in, right? The scoop is just more of the scale in the grace note. Um, but it's nice to do it at tops of phrases because it's sort of like this cresting of the line. So let's try this one more time, part one. Put in any hammer-ons you'd like and see if you want to like extra grace the top, that landing, by doing the full scoop. One, two, three, one, two, two, four, one, two. See how that works? Excellent. So we've already fancied it up. If you're still working on the melody, you don't need to put those grace notes in yet. But hey, as soon as it feels comfortable, go ahead and do it. And of course, as always, the magic of the internet, if you need any more repetitions on that or any of the upcoming parts, just rewind the video. I will be happy to practice with you as many times as you like. But for right now, I'm going on to part two. Three pickups. part of the whole tune I'm not gonna lie that that little break right and, and actually I do that in a lot of waltzes that I write uh, as some of you may be kind of waggling your eyebrows at me about but it's a good move so hey here it is part two three pickups one two three one two three okay so what am I doing I'm going up the F major arpeggio for the pickups and then down the scale from my high B flat. One, two, three, F major. That's a G minor chord right there. And I break, landing down bow. Three, one on my G and then 
an E note. Now notice I am using fourth finger there because it's a long note. If I play open string, it's kind of ugly. Open E strings are fine when you're moving quickly or you know, it's a faster tune and you're playing them beautifully. But if it's a waltz or an air or something where it's a long note, don't play the open E. Play fourth finger. It's a much nicer timbre. Uh, people who tell you that fiddlers don't use fourth fingers, not the whole truth. <laughs> the place where a fiddler would use the fourth finger there is right there at the end of the phrase. So you can get a touch of vibrato if you like and just a nicer sound. All right, try part two again. Three pick up start up bow. Two, three, one, two. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Fourth finger. Not bad, are you catching the bowing? One, two, three, one. Slur up bow pickups. One, two, three, slurs down. Now, when I land that, how I make it even more leaning, as I'm putting a hammer on, on that G note, right? But it's not just any hammer on, it's a chromatic hammer on, which means it's a half step. Now that means the note is F sharp, the actual grace note. And as you may have guessed, there are no F sharps in the key of F major. Absolutely not. But as a grace note, it's okay. And this is a really cool thing. When you have hammer-ons, you can do either diatonic hammer-ons, which are hammer-ons where the notes come from the key from the same scale, or chromatic hammer-ons, which means that it's a half-step relationship between the grace note and the note that you're landing on no matter what the key signature says. And the difference is that the chromatic hammer-on is a lot more powerful. It tugs a little harder at your heartstrings because we can feel that that note doesn't totally belong to the scale. It's different and special. And a half step's job is to lead up to the landing note, right? In fact, it's often called a leading tone. That F sharp is a leading tone to the G. It's so much more special than if I did the F natural. Do you feel that's just a little more pedestrian? Diatonic versus the chromatic. F sharp. So it's a totally different flavor. It's a really cool uh, like layer of variation that you can bring to your use of hammer-ons, which appear to be a very simple grace note. But if you're thinking about diatonic versus chromatic and the strength of, of tugging that each gives, uh, you can get a lot of, uh, lot of variation out of your hammer-ons. Uh, for some people, the chromatic hammer-on is too strong a spice sometimes. I don't always like them. In this tune, I do, because it's a very kind of emotional waltz. I want, I want that tugging. So you can choose. I recommend the chromatic hammer-on. All right, let's try that part two again. Put in whatever hammer on you like. Two, three, one, two. Nice, and notice I hammer on all other downbeats as well. Some of them are just, uh, it is totally possible to have a half step hammer on that is also diatonic in the scale. For instance, right? That's naturally a half step and it's totally fine. Try one more time. See how many hammer-ons you can put in. Phrase two, two, three, one, two. Chromatic. Yeah, rewind the video if you want any more reps, but now we're going back to part one. Remember the triplets? Now check it out, variation. little spice there. It is exactly like the regular part one. But to make it extra fancy, each of those quarter notes is going to now turn into a chromatic neighbor tone triplet. So instead of just the C, play. 
instead of just the F. And now up the scale. And notice how I'm bowing that. The triplets are always slurred. But this last one, so I end up downbeat on the landing, I'm going to use what we call in past tunes of the month a bounce slur. Down, up, down. I call it a bounce slur because it, I bounce off that down bow. Down, slur, land. Try just that. Down, slur, land. But I'm very gentle on that first down bow. I'm not accenting it. Out. That would be gross because I'm going for the top, right? That's where I'm landing. Try the whole triplet variation. Start on your C note and find your lower neighbor. There it is, nice again. Good. Now do the whole part one with that variation. Pick up triplet, one, two, three. This is the part one variation. Two, three, one, two. Variation. Nice. If you want more reps, just rewind. Here's the ending. It starts just like part two. Now we're going to shift to third position for the high D. It'll end up being your fourth finger and third finger and right back to first position. Okay, so that's cool. We've done lots of third position in past tune of the month videos. If you're new to it, that might be a good place to start with those. Uh, other videos to get comfortable with third position because this is kind of a quick shift, right? I'm going from my second finger all the way up to my fourth and right back down. You can also just kind of sound it out. Um, some people would shift all the way to fourth position rather than third. It would land you on your third finger. Fingerings are very personal. So, you know, you find what fingering sounds uh the sound matches the tune, but the wet fingering feels comfortable for you. That's how I play it. So, have at ye. <laughs> and let's try it again, the ending. One, two, three, one, two. Up. Notice I have another little chromatic hammer on there in the last bar. So anytime you feel that like extra little bit of tugging, it's so great. Um, suspect correctly that I'm using a chromatic hammer on. As we get into the B section, I'll point them out a little less, see if you can notice where I'm using them. There are quite a few. Uh, ending one more time. One, two. Let's put it all together. Remember the triplet pickup? Oh, one, two, three, one, two, and triplet, one, two. Scoop, part two. Off, part one. There you go. In 
and that's the whole A section. Go ahead, rewind, do it a bunch of times, get really comfortable. Like most waltzes, the key to this is getting it stuck in your ears, stuck in your head, and follow your ears through, sound it out. Uh, yeah, and play around with those hammer-ons. I'm going on to the B section. Now the B section, when I wrote it, this is, sounds like a heartbeat. That was I was inspired by. Lena. This is a, a, a birth tune uh, when Lena was born. She's a, 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 a rambunctious kiddo now, but uh, yeah. You feel that heartbeat and breath? I'll play the whole section. See how much you can figure it out with me. One, two. section. It will feel like you're just playing one short section. The form's a little wonky, but that's fine. It works in the context of the tune. So this part one is the heartbeat, and I'm going to take three pickups, a neighbor tone on my F, and then land on that D. It's a beautiful harmonization. Off. That's really just part one, those two heartbeats. Try it. Pick up F, land on your D. Now same pickups, but go down, up, to the C. Try just that much. One, two, D, C. Yeah, one, two. Now the bowing is really important here. The first pickups do go up bow. Now here, how I make this work is I slur down, up, and then I'm down. It's a little leaning pickup. And it feels a little like that bounce slur that we had back in the A section for the triplet variation. It's a slick bowing that you might necessarily, not necessarily think of when you just look at the sheet music but it's the most graceful way through this particular rhythm, which is a rather unusual waltz rhythm. I haven't heard it many other places. Try it again, the heartbeat, part one. One, two, heartbeat, down, up, heartbeat. And then, same pickup, C major. That's a little turnaround, C major. All right, so you see, I have my C major chord. I start on the third, cross to the root fifth, root triple, let land. And it's the same bowing with the triplets from the A section. Down, up, down, and triple, let land. Try that again, right on the C major. Yeah, and we put the heartbeat pick up before it. One, two. Good, try it again. Heartbeat pick up. One, two, down, up, C major. Good, and that takes you halfway through the B section. Let's put it together. The heartbeat and the C major turnaround. One, two, heartbeat. C major. Good, let's do just that much. One, two, heartbeat, heartbeat. Good, do it again. One, two. Back to part one, the heartbeat. Now the little ending. Now 
Yeah. Odds team. So it's a little G minor chord, your odds team, odd fingers. You've heard me refer to in past tunes of the month, my odds and evens team in my hand. That's how I do a lot of arpeggios. So there's my G major arpeggio, odd number fingers, three and one. And triple F major, which is my evens team. Yeah, and that's basically the whole B section with one little asterisk we'll get to in a second. Let's try it. Part one heartbeat, part two C major turnaround, part one heartbeat, and then the little ending down that arpeggio G minor. Ready? One, two. Heartbeat. Heartbeat. C major. Back to the heartbeat. Little ending, G minor, and triple it, F major. And if you feel like it goes on, you're right, because it's about to repeat. Try it again. One, two, heartbeat. C major. Back to the heartbeat. Here's the repeat, part one, the heartbeat. C major. Now, instead of going back to part one, we're gonna do a grand ending down the F major arpeggio. Yeah, so check it out. That is a pickup, so our F major arpeggio again. Land on your B flat. Up the scale triplet. F major. And the very ending, down the scale. Triplet. So it's basically like F major arpeggio scale. F major arpeggio scale. And the scales have that little triplet baked in with the same bowing from the beginning of the A section. Down, a triplet, down. Whole grand ending, three pickups. One, two, one, two, and triplet, down, up. Down the scale, and triplet, and on F. Good, let's try it again. One, two, one. in any hammer-ons you like. One, two. Do you hear where I put them in? It's basically any long note, right? One, two. Are you ready to try the whole B section? Heartbeat. One, two, heartbeat, heartbeat, C major. Back to the heartbeat. Little ending, G minor, F major. Back to part one, C major. Here's the grand ending. back to the A section. Not bad at all. Let's do it one more time. Do the whole B and then this time we will go back to the A. The form of this tune always ends on the A section so it's a nice way to review the whole tune. Make sure your bowing is down bow on the down B. Slur those triplets. Put in any hammer-ons you would like, diatonic or chromatic. And let's do it. This is B going back to a final A. Starts with a heartbeat. One, Little ending. Back up. Repeat. Heartbeat. 
ติAppears in waltzes all the time, and to slur it down, a triple it down is a beautiful, graceful, easy, feel good way to bow it. Play around with your chromatic and your diatonic hammer ons, and a little scoop if you've got time to get to the top of the phrase. So, there are the ideas that you can use here for Lena's waltz, or hopefully, you could try out in any of your other waltzes that you love to play. Go explore, that's the whole fun. Take these tricks and Make them go lots of other places. As always, if you would like to see sheet music for this or any future tunes of the month, you know what to do. Sign up for my email newsletter. You can go to my website, www.mariblack.com and sign up. Every month when I send out my email newsletter, I send out also the uh, sheet music for the current tune of the month, a special gift for the folks who stay in touch regularly. And uh, if you're already subscribed, that means you already have Lena's Waltz in your inbox. And if you are subscribing in the future, I hope it's nice there. I'll be there soon. And you will have all future tunes of the month coming to you very soon. All right. I hope this is fun. Come back here more for next month and I'll see you for more tunes in the new year.